Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time, and it is time for my 100% honest update review. And if I'm being completely honest, which is the whole point of this video, I actually thought about not doing an honest update uh, video for this update because, well, there wasn't really much of an update. It didn't really feel like an update. It it felt more like Supercell was just releasing another brawler and a few more skins. But I've actually recently been streaming on Twitch and tons of people have been asking for my opinion on quite a few different points, so I wanted to make sure and cover some of those more controversial points here on this video. By the way, you're gonna wanna make sure you follow me on Twitch so you don't miss any of my streaming for Brawl Stars as well as attempting to play other games that I'm not as good at. There's a link in the comment section and the description of this video. Now guys, I'm gonna start off by adding a big, huge, really fat disclaimer on today's video, and that is that this update was one of the fastest turnarounds for an update in the history of all Supercell games. They just released one like a month ago, and since that time, Supercell was able to produce four new skins, an awesome new environment that helps like tie the world of Brawl Stars together, and also a really cool new brawler with some unique abilities we've never seen before in Brawl Stars. And that, guys, that's actually really impressive for Supercell. Now, I'm not going to compare Supercell to any other game company. We all know of game companies that have massive, large groups of teams of developers all working on their game to release content really, really quickly. Supercell is a different company, and uh, they, they, they're set up very different than other companies that you're familiar with. And, and for Supercell, that is an awful lot of content for just one month. And I was certainly not expecting anything uh, that soon. So with all of that said, when I say that this Brawl Stars update was the smallest update, I, I don't actually mean that as a negative thing. Personally, I would rather have a consistent stream of small updates like this once every like four to six weeks in order to keep things interesting until the next big update actually happens. So in my honest 100% opinion, this update was actually a small win for, for me. Now obviously I think that the trade-off for having something small in this update and having more consistent small updates is obviously going to be having something substantial eventually. Um, I'm actually really hoping for next update because it's very likely that Supercell's next update will be right before they actually leave on their month-long vacation that is mandatory for all Finnish uh, people to go and take. That's right, Matt Finland, they require everybody to take a 30-day uh, break in the middle of the summer, so that's, that's interesting. So we, ha we do end up uh, being affected by that, and so I'm hoping that the next one is big, but that's another story. What, what I wanted to say here is that um, even though this was a small update and this was very quick, that isn't to say that this update was perfect. And I'll obviously talk about the things that I didn't think were very perfect uh, with this update a little bit later on in the video, but for now, I wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts for BB. Okay, 100% honest opinion, I freaking love BB. I honestly think she's my new favorite brawler. I love her spunky art style, I think that she's like, it's seriously epic that she seems like Bull's little sister. That's not confirmed or anything, but it definitely looks like she could be Bull's little sister. I also really like that she has this special ability built into her attack that adds to her death. It makes her stronger against close range brawlers, but at the same time, it also makes her weaker against long range brawlers. And despite her being a close range brawler, she actually has a relatively high skill cap when compared to the other close range brawlers, and I really, really like that. I've been wanting Supercell to add some more complexity to their brawlers, and while I would prefer for them to like add another ability, uh, around like level 6 or level 7, I do think that this is a really cool way to get, make the game a little bit more complex, a little bit more uh, deep. Also, her super seems really, really cool because at first, you think it's not all that strong, uh, but then, when like if you get really good at it, it's actually incredibly strong in the hands of the right player. And I think that is really awesome and I want more features like that. I do think that her star power is way too strong in comparison to other brawlers' star powers. With that said, I definitely do think that BB is actually really well balanced if you compare her to the last set of brawlers. Rosa was clearly overpowered, Carl and Jean were way too weak, BB seems to be like right in the middle and she's in a really good spot. I will say though, she does seem to have like this really awkward blind spot with her attack and that can be really annoying. I haven't quite figured out exactly what it is, but there are plenty of times when it really looks like she should have hit her target, 
but she doesn't deal damage for some reason. I'm really hopeful that Supercell will fix that because it is really frustrating to play her like that. Uh, they also might actually consider decreasing the knockback of her special ability by like one tile. I found four tiles was just like way too much and I found that it was more of like a weakness to her because it gave Brawlers an opportunity to run away than it was like actually a strength. So like going from four tiles down to three tiles would make it a lot better so that she could still keep close range Brawlers away from her while also making it so that she's not at a complete disadvantage against those longer range Brawlers. Okay, now let's talk about Rosa's voice. Yeah, guys, she's British. Okay, I love Rosa's lines. They are hilarious. I love her personality in the voice. The voice actor did an incredible job with her. Um, I have no issues with her being British. I love Brits. I was just in the UK like a, a few weeks ago. It was great. They made some great fish and chips. I, I loved them. The reason why I'm not in love with her voice is honestly the fact that I built up this expectation that she was somehow related to Shelly. They just look so dang similar. And Shelly has a Spanish voice. And now I just feel like I don't know who Rosa is anymore. I don't know, guys. Maybe, like, Rosa got lost in a forest after having Shelly. And then, like, Shelly was raised by El Primo or something. And that's where she learned Spanish. Oh, my gosh. I think I just figured out who Shelly's dad is. So, yeah. Uh, my issue with Rosa. The voice actress did a fantastic job. Love the lines. Rosa's fantastic. Love it. I just feel like... Rosa, for me, is having a little bit of an identity crisis. <laughs> or Shelly. Shelly's having an identity crisis. Okay, guys. Let's talk about skins. There are two controversial points that I want to talk about with these skins, but first, let me actually talk about them individually. I've been able to mess with these skins for a while now, and I... I love them. They seriously all look super cool, okay? Hot Rod Brock seriously looks super epic with his afro and, like, the flaming jacket. He also has a different attack and a super uh, with those rockets, which is an added bonus. I don't know what the actual skin cost will be, but I valued him at 130 gems, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, Road Rage Carl also looks really super cool. I love his angry face with his glasses. He's permanently angry. Uh, the wrench for his attack is really cool. His race car looks awesome. Like, there's, there's so much detail on it. And he also gets additional style points for his attack being a wrench in game and also the, the really cool animation for a super. I valued his skin at 150 gems. Now Bake Sale Barley is honestly hilarious. The pose is funny. The hair is funny. Oh my gosh, the pie. I love the pie. It's so funny. He actually throws out pies with his attack and his super. And the fact that, he, and also like his his walking animation, it's like he's walking on high heels in game, which is is super funny. I valued his skin at 150 gems as well, and we'll see what his skin costs actually are. Honestly, I think that I'll be more likely to play Bake Sale Barley over any other barley skin because of how funny I think it is. Now I can't show you the Maple Leaf Barley skin yet, but I do really like the skin a lot. In fact, Lady Kairos said that it's her favorite skin, so. Now while these skins are really, really cool, there are two primary concerns that the players are having with them. The first is the lack of inexpensive skins for free-to-play players that are like saving their gems for a really long time. And the second is the fact that Supercell seems to be like giving the same brawlers multiple skins while there are lots of other brawlers that don't have any skins. And I wanted to talk about both of these points. First off, let's talk about the lack of inexpensive skins for free-to-play players. Now while I valued these skins at 130 and 150 gems, I don't don't actually know what they will cost, but it's very likely that they won't be less than 80 gems. And that's, even 80 gems is pretty pricey, but my guess is that most of them will be 150 gems. And don't get me wrong, guys, I, I love that Supercell is adding expensive and really cool, unique skins into the game. I, personally, am somebody that has spent more money on the game than, like, 99.9% .9 of the players, you know, like maxing out more than one account, buying all the skins, even including the ones that I don't actually use, opening up mega boxes for brawlers that I could just buy the special offer, offer for because it'll do better if on my video if I do that instead. <laughs> By the way, all of these things are things that I do not recommend doing for like most people. It's literally an investment for my channel so I can create e like interesting content for you guys. And I actually earn that cost back through ad revenue or like sponsorships. So like, uh, it's yeah, don't 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 do that. Don't be like me <laughs> now I'm gonna be somebody that's gonna buy everything Brawl Stars related no matter what and for me the the extra cost for these expensive skins is no big deal and for a lot of dedicated fans the, also, the cost also isn't like a ton because you want to be able to give back to the company for making such an awesome game and supporting the development is really great. Like, I'm a big fan of supporting development for free-to-play games. But 
While free-to-play players aren't going to increase the revenue for Supercell, paying players spend money on the game for one of two reasons. Either they want to get a competitive edge over free-to-play players, or to have a cooler looking character than free-to-play players. Free-to-play players are literally the motivation for pay-to-play players to actually like pay money on the game. And that means that making cheap skins that are free-to-play player friendly can, is, is actually really important. And I don't actually recall the last time Supercell ever added a 30 gem skin into the game, aside from them like of adding some original skins. And if a free to play player does everything they can every day for them to farm their tokens, they will earn an average of 1.5 gems a day. And that means it would take roughly 20 days to save up for a 30 gem skin. But it would take roughly three months for a free to play player to save up for a 150 gem skin and Phoenix Crow, we're looking at half of a year of playing every single day to earn all of your rewards possible. And personally, I think it would be really cool if Supercell added skins at varying prices for each new update. One for 30 gems, one for 80 gems, one for 150 gems, maybe even one for 300 gems. This way, free-to-play players could save up enough gems between updates to buy at least one of the new skins. And the medium spenders could like obviously get like a cool-looking one, uh, and then obviously the heavy spenders are just going to buy uh, the coolest skins in the game. Now let's talk about Supercell giving the same characters that already have skins, more skins, while brothers like Terra, Piper, and Pam don't have a single skin yet. I think the big reason why people are upset about this is because they just like don't understand the big picture of what's going on with Brawl Stars actually adding skins into the game. So here's the deal, really fast, when Brawl Stars was released in beta, it was an experiment to see if players would like it before they actually released it globally. Supercell was very likely actually going to kill the game, so they threw some 3D models together, put, th put them in there. They weren't actually meant to be finished products, they were more meant to just be like placeholders until later. And the way it was explained to me, the old 3D models were actually like made in a way that the entire 3D model would have to be remade whenever a new skin was added for a brawler. It was like creating a new brawler from scratch every single time, and eventually they realized that that method would not work because they wanted to release skins more frequently. So they started adding a new 3D model system that requires more time for them to actually create each new brawler, but it's much easier for them to create new skins with it because Supercell can hire third-party contractors to create those skins for them rather than having their two to three artists and do it all by themselves. Now, it's not actually confirmed that Supercell is hiring contractors to create skins for them, by the way. This is my assumption based off of a blog post that was made by Supercell's CEO earlier this year when they were talking about ways that they could actually create more content faster for their games, and he did actually mention hiring third-party contractors. Whew. Tried to go fast there. Now, Terra, Piper, Pam, and El Primo all have to have their 3D models remade by the two to three Supercell artists that are actually focusing on working on Brawl Stars right now before they can actually start adding skins to those specific Brawlers. And that takes a lot of time and a lot of work on those two to three Brawl Stars artists. Now, any 3D artist who is familiar with pro programs such as Blender will let you know that it's a lot more complex than working with art that doesn't move or the art that is two dimensional. Uh, now, once those skins do have those character models, Supercell will be able to add more skins to the game for Terra, for Piper, for Pam. It's not that Supercell is ignoring the community's desire for a Terra skin. I have been asking for a Terra skin for a super long time. I understand. They know that. It's just a matter of time for them to actually like, get things ready. And it's only been one month since the last update when they were able to release Bo's 3D model. And really what we've been getting is one 3D model for each update. And uh, I'm sure the artists had plenty of other stuff to work on while they were... Uh, working on creating BB's artwork and also the entire Retropolis environment that also needed to be added to the game. So, yeah, it'll happen, guys. Obviously, people want Terra skins and Supercell wants to make skins for people that they'll want to buy. So, it'll happen. It's just a matter of time, guys. But enough about skins. Let's actually talk about Retropolis. I like Retropolis. They're co it's cool. It's it's I I like it. I, I I don't know what else to say about that. It's I, I like the lights. They're fun. <laughs> I'm also excited for Club Mail. I mean, after it actually works. Personally, I think that they hyped up the uh, the Retropolis environment a little bit more than they should have. It's really cool, don't get me wrong. I, worth worth the hype, for sure. But, like, if you're going to hype something, I think that they should have hyped, like, a new brawler or a new game mode. Like, those are things that players are excited for uh, that are worth hyping up instead of just, like, an environment. But enough about that. Let's... 
Let's talk about balance changes, guys. I really like the nerfs to Rosa. I think it was a good way to go. I still see her being very strong right now. I don't think it was too harsh. I'm not a fan of Frank's super being able to stun the siege base for the full duration. And I like that Carl can now pre-aim his attack while he's using his super. However, I do not like the reduced cooldown for his main attack. On certain heist maps, it actually makes him incredibly OP against the safe. And I don't like that he can actually get rid of the safe by himself in under 10 seconds. It's, it's ridiculous. My biggest gripe, though, with the balance changes is the massive lack of balance changes. If I remember right, I did a whole video talking about why I want the meta to be completely switched up. Not before this update, but before the, the last update. So two updates later, and we're getting some small changes to three brawlers. And, uh... Yeah. Now the first reason why I don't like this is because as a player I am getting bored of the same brawlers being good in the same modes and maps for basically the past nine months. It's not a challenge and there's not a big reason for me to experience with new brawlers. The second reason why is because as a content creator, there's not really a reason for me to talk about the meta because the meta has basically been the same for the past nine months and everybody's already covered it. I still do update the tier list series because there are definitely are some minor tweaks here and there and I think it's important that you guys have a, a very good source to, to actually refer to when it comes to the meta. But for the most part, the same brawlers that were strong nine months ago are still strong now and the same brawlers that were weak nine months ago are still weak. If I could have it my way, here's how I would balance Brawl Stars, okay? Once a month, I would take two brawlers that have had really low use rates for a long time and I would give them buffs that they would make it so that they're like incredibly fun to play. This would, they would obviously become OP and then people would find some brawler or some counters to the brawlers and learn how to play against those brawlers and also learn how to play those brawlers and see how they work in different situations. I would also take two brawlers that have a really high use rate and have had a good use rate for a long time and I would give them substantial nerfs so that they would become less of an obvious choice. This would give players a reason to try new brawlers and it would keep the game feeling fun and exciting for veteran players that have been playing for at least nine months. Then, two weeks after that balance change, I would actually make a few minor tweaks to make the meta a little bit less volatile until the next big change. This would actually mean balance changes would happen every two weeks, and it would once a season, you know, kind of how Clash Royale does it, and this would keep things fun and engaging for those of us that have been playing for a really long time. Now, every two weeks might be like way too frequently, but that's why I, got, I want your guys' feedback. So please let me know if you think that would be too much or if it was, it's actually something you would like. Obviously, I've been playing the game much longer than most of my viewers have been, and so that's why I really care about your guys' feedback, so please drop a comment below. Also, feel free to let me know what you think about the other things that I talked about today. If I see some feedback that is like really consistent within the community uh, that gets a lot of likes, I will definitely share it with Supercell because I care, and Supercell cares, about the game being great for the community because... That's, that's what makes a good game. That's going to be what makes the game a game that people will play for years, which is the whole motto of Supercell. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Once again, this all comes with a big fat disclaimer that, I, that Supercell did a great job at turning this update around really, really quickly. People are like used to getting massive Supercell updates, and then they're like, oh, we want this more frequently. And then it happens more frequently, and they're like, hey, where's the massive update? And it's like, you, you can't have both. You, hey, like Supercell can improve to do things faster and do a little bit more, but <laughs> you can't have a massive update every month when Supercell's whole name is based off of having small cells of individual groups that are super. Like, it just, it, it's not how Supercell works. For now, guys, this is Kairos time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.